Uh, I will now swear in the nominee. Uh, Mr. Newland, please rise and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you shall give today shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Thank you. Please be seated. I want to remind you that your full written testimony will be made part of the official hearing record. Uh, please keep your statement to no more than five minutes so that members have time for questions. Uh, Mr. Newland, please begin. Ani, miigwech. Thank you, Chairman Schatz, Vice Chairman Murkowski, and members of the committee. First, I want to thank uh, Senator Peters for his warm and kind introduction and his leadership in, um, for the state of Michigan and his friendship as well. Um, it's an honor to be here today as President Biden's nominee to serve as Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs at the Department of the Interior, an important position uh, that serves as a leader for the U.S. trust relationship with tribal nations. It's also a privilege to serve with Secretary Holland at such an important time for Indian country. I'm so happy to have my wife Erica here with me. Uh, we grew up together on the Bay Mills Reservation and she's been my partner, strategic advisor, and most importantly, my designated humbler every step of the way. Together we have two incredible children, Graydon and Meredith, who are also here, as are my parents, Gordon and Vicki Newland. My parents had me at a young age under difficult circumstances and worked hard to raise my brother Robert, my sister Holly, and me. They also had long careers in public service and instilled those values in us, and I want to thank them for that. Growing up on our reservation, I saw how federal laws and policies affected the lives of everyday Indians. Commercial tribal fishers exercised treaty-protected fishing rights to feed their families. I lived up the street from the Bay Mills Community College, which was the first tribally controlled community college established in the state of Michigan. Our family also lived in tribal housing, which is supported by federal funding. My parents were fortunate to each have jobs, which allowed them to get a land lease so that we could move out of tribal housing and purchase a home. We lived in a single wide trailer for several years while they waited for the Bureau of Indian Affairs to approve their mortgage. When that mortgage was finally approved, my parents became the first people on our reservation to have a mortgage financed home. Their experience with the BIA's time-consuming mortgage approval process and the delays they faced was an experience that would stick with me. I attended Michigan State University and the MSU College of Law where I was the first Native student to enroll in the Indigenous Law and Policy Program. I graduated there in 2007 and started in private practice. But soon after, I had the opportunity to serve in President Obama's administration at the Department of the Interior within the Office of the Assistant Secretary. There, I was lucky to have mentors like Larry Echohawk and Del Laverder. We worked to reform leasing on Indian lands so, uh, by putting timelines in place so that other families wouldn't face the same delays and circumstances my parents did. We worked with members of this committee to uh, see the bipartisan enactment of the Hearth Act putting tribes back in control of leasing and home mortgages on tribal lands. After that, I returned home and used my experience to serve my own tribe, to teach Indian law to aspiring native attorneys, and to advocate on behalf of other tribes. In 2013, I was elected as chief judge of the Bay Mills Tribal Court. In that role, I heard heart-wrenching cases about families in crisis, and I also enforced criminal laws in a deliberate and fair way. In that position, we worked to establish the Bay Mills Healing to Wellness Court. It's a substance abuse treatment court that has helped reunite families, provide job opportunities and housing to people in need, and to maintain our tribal connections to one another. In 2017, our tribe elected me to serve as tribal president, and we set about to make Bay Mills a better place to live. We were making progress when the pandemic struck, and that became an important life or death focus of mine. Through our partnership with the Indian Health Service, we established community surveillance testing for COVID-19. We saw a disproportionately low rate of infection on our reservation, thanks to nonpartisan coordination with local, state, and federal officials. At the same time, we were able to expand our tribal businesses, develop a new health center, and grow jobs and incomes at Bay Mills, which were important goals for our community. I know firsthand the experience or the connection between public service and the lives of others. When you live with the people you serve, you can't escape that connection. If you make a mistake, you see it. 
And if you don't see it, there's sure to be an auntie or a friend there to remind you. If, co if confirmed, I will bring that perspective with me to the Department of the Interior. We must help Indian country build back better after the pandemic. We must respond with urgency to the violence against indigenous women and children across Indian country. And we must lay the foundation for the next generation of native children to succeed. I believe that tribal governments, rather than federal agencies, are best suited to respond to the challenges their communities face. Our job is to be a collaborative trustee and ensure that Indian country drives our work. With your consent, I'll be a leader on those important efforts. I wanna say miigwech again, thank you for the opportunity to be here today and for your service to our country. And I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you.